After talking about hematology for all of these lectures, I realized, oh, we haven't talked about polycythemia yet. We have talked about anemia when your red blood cells are low, but we haven't talked about polycythemia when you have lots of red blood cells. Shame on me. That's why let's talk about myeloproliferative disorder when everything is in huge numbers. And let's get started. Here is the famous golden slide of hematopoiesis. Myeloid stem cells, lymphoid stem cells give you everything except for lymphocytes. We'll give you only the lymphocytes and natural killer cells. Myeloproliferative is on this side. Lymphoproliferative disorder is on this side. So, for example, polycythemia vera, you have lots of red blood cells. CML, you have lots of neutrophils and some basophils. Okay. In case of essential thrombocytosis, you have lots of platelets. Okay. Now, normally, normally without these disorders, you need erythropoietin to stimulate production of red blood cell. You need GMCSF, which is granulocyte monocyte colony stimulating factor, to stimulate the granulocytes, which are neutrophils, basophils, and eosinophils, and to stimulate the production of monocytes. That's normally. I'm not talking about these disorders now. I'm talking about normal. And you need thrombopoietin to stimulate platelet production. That's normal. But when you have a disease such as myeloproliferative disorder, you will have lots of red blood cells already. So as a negative feedback mechanism, the erythropoietin level is going to be low. If you have CML, GMCSF is going to be low. If you have essential thrombocytosis, you don't need to secrete thrombopoietin, so TPO will be low. It's called a negative feedback mechanism where I grew up. So those are the myeloproliferative disorder. Have we talked about lymphoproliferative disorder? Yes, we have talked about leukemia and lymphoma for a long time. Those are the lymphoproliferative disorder, kiddo. Two types of proliferative disorder. It's either myeloproliferative or lymphoproliferative. Myeloproliferative neoplasm or MPNs include CML, chronic myeloid leukemia, CNL, chronic neutrophilic leukemia, CEL, chronic eosinophilic leukemia. PV is polycythemia vera. PMF is primary myelofibrosis. It's, it's bone marrow fibrosis, basically. ET is essential thrombocytosis. And last is mastocytosis. We're going to talk about those CML, PV, PMF, and ET. And I'm not going to talk about the rest unless you request that. But I'd like to switch to a new topic. Let's talk about acid-base balance in a new series. So let's just end with hematology because it has been a long time. A myeloproliferative disorder is a disease of the elderly. Now contrast that with Hodgkin's lymphoma. I told you it's a disease of the young. Burkitt's lymphoma, which is a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, is a disease of the young. Myeloproliferative neoplasms are diseases of the elderly. It's very unlikely for a 20-year-old person to have myeloproliferative neoplasm. Just because you're studying polycythemia vera doesn't mean that you have it, okay? Because some students are very suspicious and very pessimistic because they are itchy after showers. They think they have polycythemia vera. Stop it. If it's a myeloproliferative disorder, it means all cell lines are affected. Increased number of red blood cells, increased number of white blood cells, increased number of platelets. It's a myeloproliferative disorder, which means that the bone marrow is hypercellular. It's working like crazy. Okay. And sometimes when the bone marrow is not enough, the spleen starts to work like crazy and you end up with splenomegaly. But in myeloproliferative neoplasm, okay, only one cell line is dominant. Yes, the three of them are increased, but one of them is super increased. One of them dominates. In polycythemia vera, red blood cell dominate. In essential thrombocytosis, platelets dominate. In CML, neutrophils dominate. And I've talked about CML before. 
all of them will have rapid cell turnover, which means I'm creating new cells and I'm destroying cells. I'm creating cells, destroying cells, creating cells, destroying cells. So we need lots of components and we're destroying lots of components and so forth. So we need to destroy the nucleus. When we destroy the nucleus, we end up with purine metabolism and there is the salvage system to be used again. This will lead to lots of uric acid. Uric acid precipitates attack of gouty arthritis. All of them can transform into an acute leukemia. And since they are myeloproliferative disorder, this acute leukemia is going to be a ML and not a LL. They are myeloproliferative. So, myeloproliferative neoplasm, disease of the elderly, all cell lines are affected, but one of them is super dominant. Rapid cell turnover, high uric acid, splenomegaly in most of them, and they can transform into acute myeloid leukemia. The bone marrow is hypercellular. Now, the genetic problems in cases of myeloproliferative neoplasm. Your exam will love to ask you about this crazy stuff. In CML, it's the 922 translocation, also known as the Philadelphia chromosome, due to effusion of BCR and ABL. CNL is T1519. CEL is PDGFR alpha, growth factor alpha, growth factor receptor alpha, platelet-derived growth factor receptor alpha, polycythemia vera or primary myelofibrosis, or essential thrombocytosis, the problem is called V617F mutation leading to activation of JAK2 kinase. JAK2 kinase is very important for your exam. So again, CML922, CNL1519, polycythemia, PMF, and essential thrombocytosis, JAK2 kinase, mastocytosis, C cat mutation, and in the kit D, whatever V. Polycythemia vera, primary myelofibrosis, essential thrombocytosis. The problem is activation of JAK2 kinase, which is a tyrosine kinase. What does JAK2 kinase does? It stimulates erythropoietin and thrombopoietin. Place, pay, pay attention, pay attention, receptors. JAK2 does not increase EPO. JAK2 does not increase TPO. JAK2 stimulates their receptor. So... Again, let's do it. Here is the receptor for erythropoietin, which is EPO. Okay. We have two methods of stimulating this receptor. Normally, we have the erythropoietin comes and stimulate this receptor, so we increase the production of our red blood cells. Very fine, that's normal. But when we have a disease such as the crazy JAK2 kinase activation, the JAK2 kinase itself will come and stimulate this receptor. That doesn't mean the JAK2 increased EPO, it didn't. In fact, it directly stimulated its receptor leading to proliferation of red blood cell. As a negative feedback mechanism when we have lots of red blood cells, there is no reason to secrete EPO, so the level of EPO in the blood is gonna decrease in cases of polycythemia vera. The level of TPO in the blood is gonna decrease in cases of essential thrombocytosis. Got it? So JAK2 stimulates the receptor. Very cool. JAK2 does not stimulate GMCSF, so there is no huge increase in white blood cells. This is different from CML. In CML, you have lots of white blood cells, but not in these nice guys. I really hope these videos are helpful to you. Please consider supporting to my YouTube channel. Please consider supporting this channel on Patreon. You can view, download, print, and enjoy all of these PDF notes that I'm drawing right now. They are awesome. Until next time, be safe, stay happy, and study hard.